Hey everyone, this is Rob Guilfoyle of FW Web. This is part two in our video series of creating a VAV system. In part one, we covered the creation of the VAV air handling unit. This is part two, we'll be going over the creation of the VAV boxes. So before we move on to the question and answer for the VAV boxes, we'll need one bit of information for peer-to-peer. -peer. We're going to be sharing the discharge air temperature with the VAV boxes so that they know when to go into morning warm-up mode. So we'll go up to discharge air temperature, DA-T, double-click, and our object identifier for a BACnet is analog input 1019. So we will make note of that and then move on to creating the VAV boxes. So we'll go up to File, say New. We're going to be, again, in 10.2 mode. So we just click OK. The system type is going to be VAV. Our system name, we can call it VAV with reheat, RHT. Say OK. We're going to be using a PCV1630, which has an integrated actuator for the supply damper. We're going to say that it has a coil. It's going to be a reheat coil, so we'll say it's a hot water coil. And I'm going to use a proportional output as opposed to an incremental output. So proportional output would be a 0 to 10 volt output. Going to move our way down, I'm going to put a discharge air temperature sensor on there so I can tell if my hot water coil is working or not. I'm going to use a temperature sensor with a set point adjust, the common set point adjust, as opposed to warm cool adjust. And I'm going to include temporary occupancy support. We'll go to the next page. Uh, nothing here to select, so all of this is just the uh, defaults will be accepted. I'll click Finish. Building the program in the background, and here it is. So, first thing I want to uh, look at is this SA-T point on the network inputs. That is the point that's going to be monitoring the discharge air temperature from our air handling unit. So I'm going to go into edit mode on this, go to view details, and I'm going to edit. And in my peer-to-peer -peer reference, I'm once again needing to put in the instance number from my air handling unit. So from the last video, we know that that was set to 2104. 2001 being the network number that I chose for that BACnet network 04 because that is the MAC address of the air handling unit. Now the object identifier that we just looked at, analog input 1019. I'm going to apply and close. Now you can see the little peer-to-peer -peer icon exists here, it tells me that that's been configured. Next thing that we need to do for our zone set point, I'd like to limit this so that people are not able to turn the set point knob all the way up or all the way down. So I want to give them adjustability, but not too much. So we'll go into the zone set point, I'll go into edit mode, and for this, I'm going to say they can go from 68 to 74 degrees. That'll give them a few degrees of adjustability. I guess I did that backwards. Max value, 74. Min value, 68. Apply and close. The next thing that we need to do is put in our box size along with the min and max airflow settings. 
So that would normally come off of your VAV schedule. So we'll go into the balancer override SD block. That's where all that information is located. And I'm going to go into edit mode and on my inputs. I'm sorry, on my outputs rather. I'm going to go to cooling max flow. So we would put the value in cooling max flow. Cooling min flow, we would put in the value. Heating arc min flow is usually set to the same value as our cooling arc min flow. However, in some cases, if the air is stratifying near the ceiling and that minimum flow isn't enough to push the warm air down into the space, you may be able to increase the heating arc min flow to something a little higher than that, maybe 50% of our max flow uh, at a maximum so that we can push that heat down into the space. If you go too high, the air will flow across the coil too quickly and we won't be able to pick up any heat from that. So you have to be careful about how high you go on that. And then last but not least, the SA area, that's the size of the box in square feet. So if you know the radius of the box, if it's a round box, then if you want to do the math on it, it is pi r squared. So you would take pi times the radius squared. That would give you the size in square inches. And then if you divide that number by 144, that gives you square feet. So that's the mathematical way of doing it if you don't have a chart that tells you what those sizes are. So we'll apply those changes. Go to close. Next thing that we need to do is go into Define Hardware. If I go to Define Hardware, go to Point Assignment, you can see that the points have been assigned automatically. And once again, if you needed to move them, you could, but there's no reason to here. Under my network settings now, I'm going to give this a device name of VAV01. The device address will be 5 for a VAV1, and my instance number will be 2105. I can close that and save. Uh, some of the things that we would need to be aware of, so for our damper output, if we go in and view the details of that damper, what we're looking at is the default settings. So the default settings for that internal damper motor is 60 second effective stroke time. So 60 seconds from zero to 100 percent. And the polarity as set as normal means that the damper will move clockwise to open. If the damper moves in the opposite direction, we could go into edit mode here and change that to reverse acting, and that would give us a counterclockwise to open action on the damper motor. So I can apply that if that's the way it is. We just need to know those things uh, beforehand, so that's something that you may need to check out on the VAV box to see which way it's going to operate. And then by the same token on the heating output, if we have a normally closed valve, 0 to 10 volts opens the valve, then we can set, under our hardware settings, we can leave this setting 0 to 100%. If it was a reverse acting valve, normally open, where 10 volts is closing the valve, then we would swap these two values. I would put 100 in our min val value and 0 in the max value. And we can apply that. You can see it will take it. If we had a 2 to 10 volt actuator as opposed to a 0 to 10, we could go into edit, make the max output value 20%. That would give us 2 to 10. So 
that's how you would adjust for either 2 to 10 or reverse acting or direct acting. Close. That concludes the uh, configuration of this VAV box here. Now what we're going to do is do a save as, so we can keep all of the same settings, all of the changes that I made to the zone set point and the damper rotation and the heating output, and save it as the next controller. So first I'm going to do a save. And I'm going to save this one as VAV01. And I'm going to give it the suffix of 5 so that I know that that is its MAC address. And I'll do a save on that. Now I can go up and do File, Save As. And I can save this to VAV2 at address 6. Do a save. So more than likely this will be a different size box with different air flows so we would have to go into balancer override SD, go down to our outputs again and correct these values maybe it's 1200 and 220 And we'll just say it's the same box size, but if it wasn't, you would have to put in the new box size here. Apply that and close. And then finally, we would go back into Define Hardware and go to our network settings. And the device name for this one will be VAV2 at address 6, 2106. We'll close to save those settings. I will do a file and save. And now you can see that we've got the two VAV boxes created along with the air handling unit. This concludes this video of configuration of VAV boxes in part two. We'll be having more videos in the future on other systems and eventually we'll do one on how to bring this air handling unit along with the two VAV boxes into a workbench site. Thank you.